Welcome to the Work Trends Podcast brought to you by Talent Culture. I'm your host, Megan M. Biro. Every week, I interview smart people reimagining the world of work. Be sure to stay current with all of our interesting podcasts by visiting our page at Talent Culture Work Trends on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And of course, you can listen at talentculture.com on the podcast page. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Talent Culture Work Trends podcast, sponsored by Alpha Dental. I'm your host, Megan Ambiro, and today we are diving into the world of employee benefits, which has changed quite a bit over the last few, oh, say, days or decades. We will uncover what benefits appeal to different generations, how technology plays a role, how to effectively capture ROI, and much more. But before we jump into today's podcast, go ahead and ask yourself these two questions. Number one, do you feel like your organization's benefits match what employees need and want? And number two, do you think your benefits offering is compelling enough to be used as a recruitment tool? Let's get started. Joining us today is Brent Troxel. Brent is a senior vice president of Beta Health, a company focused on delivering exceptional benefits, technology, and administration services, including Alpha Dental Plan. Brent has a passion for building strong teams and solving strategic problems in the healthcare field. He has an MBA from the University of Denver and such an interesting story here, uh, audience. I am so excited to, to welcome you here today, Brent. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much. Glad to be joining you and all your listeners here today. Absolutely. This discussion of benefits is so important, and that is absolutely all caps, everybody, regarding organizational spend and also what employees demand. And yes, I say that word on purpose in today's workforce. Let's get started. So tell me, how is the workforce evolving today and how are different generations reacting to different benefits? Yeah, fantastic place to start. I mean, the workforce today is just increasingly generationally diverse, which, you know, you and all your listeners certainly know, but and that really is impacting their approach to work, what they're valuing out of their employers, out of their employment experiences, but also just the way that people approach work in generally in general, from gig economy workers pulling together multiple part-time jobs, thinking about things like that. You know, from the kind of the, the lower end of the age spectrum, we certainly hear about technology technology really consistently and how important that is to how they think about their benefits or really how they think about kind of any company that they're going to interact with and, and how critical that is to them. And, you know, we're really seeing kind of microclimates in terms of benefits as lifestyles change, as values change. And we, sh- we should really ask, why are we not thinking more about how to make a more varied approach instead of kind of the traditional one size fits all approach to benefits. As we progress throughout our lives, different things are are different to us at that point in time, whether it's, you know, medical needs as, as an older adult, child care needs as a, you know, a, a middle adult, maybe just kind of overall wellness and mental health as a, as a young person entering the workforce. So really, I think this is a really interesting topic that is going to challenge workforces and challenge employers going forward and excited to keep diving in with, in with it here with you today. Oh my gosh, absolutely. And did you just say microclimate? That's pretty cool, by the way. I see what you did there, Brent. That's why I like you so much because you just come up with this stuff and you're actually doing it. I mean, we all talk here a lot about our multi-generational workforce, but this topic can look very different to people of different ages. So it's absolutely critical to explore and understand it. So tell us, what can employers do to ensure they offer benefits worth the investment and compelling to employees? Well, I think the, the big thing here is thinking about what are the employee needs that you have? I mean, every employer is going to have a different workforce and thus they're going to have really different needs that, that are valued. You know, we still see medical and, and dental topping the charts as far as kind of what are the, the desired benefits, because I think that is pretty constant over time and you want to have that level of protection. But it really differs, like I said, on the type of business that you run. So really start thinking about how can you uniquely benefit your employees? What are the age groups you're primarily employing, their lifestyles, their demographics. So I think, you know, starting with surveys and feedback sessions just to understand what's important to them. But, you know, for some employees, it's going to be adding on that next level of traditional benefits, 
So health and wellness, on-site daycare, mental health options, but it's not really just about offering those. It's what is that solution going to be that's going to make a difference for your employees, right? Like when you think about mental health, for instance, maybe a meditation app really isn't solving the problem that your employees want. Maybe they need something a little bit more intensive. But then, you know, you could have the other end of the spectrum where, you know, if you've got lower wage employees, blue collar folks, and your benefits are entirely voluntary, how are they accessing the healthcare that they need in a way that's going to allow them to show up to work? So those traditional type benefits might not work for them. Maybe they need something that's a little bit more flexible and affordable. Maybe you're bringing healthcare to the work site occasionally. Maybe you're offering English as a second language courses to your employees. So really think what's going to drive value for their lives and keep them healthy and coming back to work. You know, in Alpha, we've opened up a really flexible way to enroll in our plan that takes no traditional administration. So kind of that last piece that I talked about of really thinking about how do you tailor that benefit experience to the type of employee that you have and and what's going to make a difference for them in their lives. This part of the conversation gets to the nitty gritty of ensuring that everyone wins. That's why I like it so much. And as we all know, that isn't always the case. So I like that you are committed to helping organizations spend their own money wisely, but understand the needs of the people because it really is twofold. It's three and maybe more so in, in many cases. So listen, do you have advice on how to communicate effectively with employees to ensure that benefits are utilized and enjoyed to maximize the ROI? And beyond that, do you have specific examples for us? Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll kind of give a kind of a few easy wins, I guess I would say, and then, you know, maybe some more out there ideas of, of kind of some next steps that might take a little bit thought to execute. But, you know, first of all, I think it's really when you're offering benefits leverage the partners that you have for those benefits because they want their product to be successful too. So if you're able to utilize them in a, in a good way to help get that information to your employees, that's going to be helpful for you. It's going to take work off your plate. They're going to hear that message directly from the source. And so one really easy way to do this is to provide access to employee emails for those partners. You know, you've selected this partner for a reason. So make sure you validate how they're going to use that information and how they're going to contact employees, but let them do some of that on their own. As a benefit solution provider ourselves, you know, we want to make sure that we're reliably and appropriately communicating with our members and making sure that they get the information they need. But I think historically kind of giving that direct access to employees has been a little taboo, but I do think that it helps solve that issue for you as an employer where you're not trying to communicate everything all at once to your employees. But, and then, you know, certainly make sure that you're asking your partners to provide feedback and reporting on, on how they're interacting and what kind of feedback they're getting. But then kind of moving on to some, some other specific examples that might kind of take things to the next level you know, really think about gamification of your benefits. How are, you know, what is that utilization, that success story that you're looking for? How can you get people engaged in the process? You know, right here, we're in a podcast talking to employers about interesting topics for HR professionals and folks in the industry that are of interest to them. Turn that internal to your employees. You know, if you've got folks that are out in the field and are, you know, driving from site to site, or even for your employees that are just driving into the office, make a five or 10 minute podcast about all your different benefits, you know, one a day and let that be part of their day is to listen to those benefits and communicate them. But I I think finally, I mean, it's really like what does success or value look like for that benefit that you're offering? Because it might be different for each one, right? Every benefit is there for a different reason. And so the success of that and the outcome of that is going to look different. So I think that's the most important part is to think about how you're going to measure what you want to get out of the benefit that you're offering and then figure out a way to measure that. This is very insightful. And I will also also underscore that so many organizations struggle with the communications element of benefits. It can be more than a folder of lingo. The heart of these communications absolutely needs to be rooted in usage, creative reminders, sparking those aha moments, and much more to keep the community of benefit recipients active and successful. So there's a lot going on here. Let's move to leaders because they want to hear this too. So how can leaders capitalize on benefits as a recruitment and a retention tool for today's workforce? 
Yeah, I mean, I'll go back to a couple of the things that that I just said. I mean, it's really how are you making your benefits unique? So if you want recruitment and retention to link to your benefits, how are you making those benefits unique to your workforce? And then second, as I as I mentioned again, you know, how have you defined success? So find some of those success stories, talk to your people, like find out who's using those benefits and let them help you communicate those stories. I mean, the story of an employee who is, you know, successfully successfully used a benefit is going to be a lot stronger than just listing it on a piece of paper, right? So figure out how to do that and then take those success stories out to the rest of your employees and and then take them public as well. But I, I do think that you want to also start thinking about, so far, I've been kind of talking about those individualized, tangible benefits. But when you start thinking about retention, you know, how do you think about creating benefits that contribute to the culture and morale of, of the company? So how are you financially incentivizing people are giving them more financial stability in in their own lives, that they're not just looking for the next thing. How do you think about what what an inclusion benefit looks like, how people are working together? What does engagement look like? And how do you leverage engagement with these benefits? Kind of going back to what I said earlier about bringing those success stories to bear and really communicating those and just aligning your benefits with your company value and the industry. So don't make it generic. Find Find a benefit that's very unique to to what you what you're doing you know not everyone can do this for sure but like like you know Patagonia gives folks surf days and things like that right so you're going to hear those from the big companies but figure out something that's really interesting and unique to to your industry or to your company time flies we are having fun here so much to unpack with you today Brent uh, I ha- I actually have to like, you know, I'm, I'm like, I, I have like 20 questions. Anyways, how <laughs> has technology played a role in improving the customer experience for people who want information, access and educations about their benefits? Yeah, I mean, this is this is a great way to to start wrapping it up because technology is is the ultimate question I think when it comes to just about anything, but certainly in the benefits world today. I mean, we're seeing it change the game on pretty much every aspect of how we we interact in this space with any of our partners, our employers, our end user members. And so, kind of a, a few high level points just to start it off is. One, make it digestible. I mean, I think the use of tech- technology really allows you to kind of get things out of the the one page flyer or the twenty page <laughs> document. You know, make it digestible um, so people understand the value of it. We were talking about value earlier, and then you know, make it available when it's most needed for the employee. I think that's where technology can really play a role. You know, as you're trying to digest your benefits package, you know, you're going to probably have to do that after hours, right? Or if you need to take your son to the to urgent care you know you're going to have to figure out where is that urgent care located what are my benefits on a saturday morning so really making technology enables us to make benefits and benefit information available to employees when they need it most and then the the big one which i think is is really where the future is going is how do we make it personalized technology really offers the ability to start thinking about how do we personalize benefits so it's not that one size fits all so you know specifically you know we're leveraging online portals on our side to make sure that you can log in whenever you need to, whether it's your your dental benefit, you're hearing some additional financial add-on that we might have to help you pay for services. All that's available right in the portal for you to access whenever you want to. And then, you know, you start getting into opportunities like virtual assistants, AI, chatbot, things like that, that are going to benefit the the needs of the employee, you know, for that 80-20 rule, like, right, how can you serve a strong portion of the population of the needs and the questions that you're going to have through a virtual environment? And then how do you target customers and, and your members at the right time in the right way when that product is most meaningful them, to them, whether it's a point in time during the year, whether it's a life event, some other kind of experience that they have that's going to make you more valuable to them at that point in time? You know, there's probably about 10 other ways that I could, that I could start talking about <laughs> I know. here. I told the audience that I said, be ready for this Brent Troxel because I have a sneaky suspicion we're going to see more of you in the future because you've got much more to talk about. This is a huge topic, but I have to say, you know, we live in the future of work here at Talent Culture, and we really appreciate your sage and your insights into where we're headed next. Very exciting stuff. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Glad to, glad to be a part of the conversation. Brent, 
thank you so much for your time and expertise today. The world of benefits can be daunting and you're a shining example of how it can be managed and communicated well. Here are a few of my key takeaways. Number one, ensure you understand your organizational demographics and the benefits that are needed and desired. Number two, benefits can absolutely set you apart from other organizations. Your offerings should be considered a recruitment and retention tool and should be selected as such. Number three, there are compelling ways to talk about benefits by personalizing the story. Allow your team to explore how to effectively communicate what benefits exist and why. Thank you again for being here today, Brent. It has been a joy speaking with you. And listeners, be sure to visit alphadentalplan.com or contact them directly at smile at alphadentalplan.com to learn more. And last but not least, the talent culture community wants to hear from you. So tell us, when was the last time your organization revamped its benefits offerings to meet the changing needs of employees? What do you think is the most effective way to communicate about benefits? And what do you think the future of benefits looks like? Visit us on the socials any old time. We've got the Twitter X, we've got LinkedIn, we've got the Instagram, or feel free to just contact Contact me personally at mbiro at talentculture.com. As always, thanks for listening to the Work Trends Podcast, the place to find meaningful connections at work. If you love what we do here, do us a favor. Make sure to share our podcast with your friends, your colleagues, or send us a question on the socials using the hashtag Work Trends. See everybody soon. Thanks for joining us for today's conversation. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Just a reminder that you can hear all the Work Trends podcasts on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and on the podcast page at talentculture.com. Be sure to subscribe so you can listen on the go and stay up to date on all the latest news you want to hear. I look forward to catching up with you next time. I hope today's information made you wiser, happier, more informed, and most importantly, thinking of how you can use it to improve the quality of your life.